Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at a question that involves the equation of locus of a moving point. And in this question we're looking at a point that moves in a circle. I'm going to discuss two different methods that you can use to solve this problem. So let's get to the question. Points A and B are two end points of the diameter of a circle. Point C is a moving point on the circumference of a circle. Find the equation of the locus of C. When dealing with questions like this, it's always helpful to do a sketch first. So let's use all the information given to us. We have two endpoints of a diameter of a circle. And C is the circumference of the circle. So we have a circle with points A and B, which are the endpoints of a diameter. You don't have to sketch this very accurately. You don't have to plot the points. Just sketch the circle and label the points. You can draw them anywhere you like. As long as we draw it as the diameter of the circle, which means it passes through the center of the circle O. C is a moving point on the circumference of a circle. So C is the point that forms the circle actually. All the points that makes up the circle. So this is C. C is anywhere on the circle. It can be here, it can be here, it can be anywhere as long as it is on the circle. We give the coordinates x, y to c. Coordinates of a and b are given to us. The equation of locus is meant to tell us the relationship between the x coordinate and y coordinate of all the points in the locus, in the path. So this equation that we obtain is to tell us the relationship between the x coordinate and the y coordinate of all the points on the circle. There are two different methods that I'm going to explore here in answering the question. And the first uses the principle that wherever point C is on the circle, when we join the points together, A, B, C together, we will form a right angle triangle where the right angle is here. No matter where C is on the circle, when we join points A, B, C, we form a right angle triangle where the right angle is always at point C. A, C, B will always be 90 degrees. And so we can use the concept of perpendicular lines. I've done a video on perpendicular lines. The video link is at the corner. When we have perpendicular lines, the product of the gradients of the two lines will be negative one. That is the concept that we're going to be using here. So the gradient of line AC multiplied by the gradient of line BC must give us negative one. We find the gradient by using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So when we are doing AC, we have x minus negative four over y minus eight and the gradient of BC, x minus 2 over y minus 0. And this product must give us negative 1. So when we work this out, we get x squared plus 4x minus 2x minus 8. When we open the bracket here, and at the bottom, we multiply y inside, we get y squared minus 8. Multiply both sides by the denominator to get rid of the fraction. So multiply both sides by y squared minus 8y. Here, they will eliminate each other. And here we get negative 1 multiplied by y squared minus 8y. So we get negative y squared plus 8y. And this is what is left, the numerator. Simplify further, we have x squared plus 2x minus 8. We want to eliminate this because generally the equation of the locus is everything on the left side equals to 0 when it comes to a circle. So we have to plus y squared and minus 8y in order to eliminate whatever we have on the right hand side. So we have to do that on both sides of the equation. This is what we end up with. x squared plus y squared plus 2x minus 8y minus 8 equals to 0. And this is the equation of the locus of point C. This equation tells us the relationship between the x coordinate and the y coordinate along this circle. So if I have 2, you can check your answer by using the points given to you. If you substitute x equals to 2 in this equation, you must get y equals to 0. Same thing, if you substitute x equals to negative 4 into this equation, you must get y is equals to 8. This is the first method that we can use. The second method that we can use uses the concept that this point C, the point that is moving to form the locus, will always have the same distance to the center because it is a circle it will always be equidistant to the center of the circle so we can make use of this distance OC 
is always equals to distance OA and distance OB. In order to find these distances, first we need to find the coordinate of the center of the circle, center of the locus. We can find this here by using the midpoint formula because here we have the diameter and the center of the circle is exactly in the middle of the diameter. The formula for midpoint is x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So we can get O, x coordinate will be negative 4 plus 2 divided by 2 and the y coordinate will be 8 plus 0 divided by 2. And when we work this out, we get negative 1 and 4. This is the coordinate for the center of the circle O. Now that we have the coordinate of the center of the circle, we can equate the distance. So you can choose either equals to distance of OA or distance of OB. I chose OB here. So distance of OC, wherever the point is on the circle, the distance to the center will always be the same as the distance from O to B. Here we can apply the distance formula. So distance will be the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. The distance formula actually makes use of Pythagoras theorem. Let's look at OB. This distance from O to B is actually the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. So when we use A square equals to B square plus C square, hypotenuse square will be equals to this distance square and this distance is simply y2 minus y1 plus this distance squared which is x2 minus x1 so if you forget the formula all you have to remember is it makes use of the Pythagoras theorem so when we apply this formula this distance equals to this distance we apply on both sides distance of OC will be x minus negative 1 squared plus y minus 4 squared and on the right side OB will be 2 minus negative 1 squared plus 0 minus 4 squared. Since both are square root, we can square both sides. This is what we end up with. And now we have to expand all the brackets. So we simplify before expanding. We get 3 square, negative 4 square, x plus 1 square, y minus 4 square. We can deal with the numbers first, 9 plus 16. And on the left side, we can open the bracket. If you know the shortcut for squaring the bracket, then you can straight away use it. But here, let's just use the long method. So when we multiply, open bracket, each term must multiply by both on the other side. Same goes to 1. So this is what we get. If we simplify further. We get x squared plus 2x plus y squared minus 8 plus 17 is 25. In order to eliminate 25, because remember, the form that we use is equals to 0. So we have to minus 25 on both sides of the equation. And this is what we end up with. x squared plus 2x plus y squared minus 8y minus 8 equals to 0. Now this is already correct, but generally we write it in this form. x squared plus y squared, the x squared term and the y squared term first, and then the x term and y term, and then the number. This is just a way of arranging it. So we have x squared plus y squared plus 2x minus 8y minus 8 equals to 0, which is exactly what we got using the first method. That's it for this video guys, I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do hit the like button to support me and my channel, it really does help. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe, I'll be producing at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.